learned in the last video that making an organized list is a very useful tool. When we make an organized list, sometimes we can see a pattern forming, and then we can use that pattern to help us solve the problem. Let's look at another example. So I run a math club every Wednesday, and the students in the math club have spent all school year learning and practicing problem solving strategies, just like you guys. Last Wednesday, the students competed in a mini math contest, and I promised them that I would go out and get the three winners, this guy, this guy, and this guy, each a box of candy. So I went to the store and I bought five bo boxes of candy. I got some Trolley Sour Bright Crawlers Mini. I got some Swedish Fish. And I got some Sour Patch Kids. I love Sour Patch Kids. And got some Dots. And finally I got some Mike and Ike Sour Licious. I know what you're thinking. Young, why did you go buy five boxes of candy if you're only going to give out three boxes? Well, these elementary math students are very picky about their candy. I wanted to make sure they weren't mad at my selections, so I bought two extra selections just in case. Once I brought these five boxes to my math club, my students were obviously very excited. But as curious mathematicians, they wanted to know how many different ways I could give out these five boxes to the top three students. First, we labeled all the objects. B1, B2, B3, B4, and B5. Now that we have labeled all the objects, we can make an organized list. Today we will use a tree diagram to help us make the organized list and group different choices. So let's start by giving B1 to the first winner. If we give B1 to the first winner, then we have four choices for the second winner. So if we give B1 to the first winner, then we can give B2 or B3 or B4 or B5 to the second winner. If we give B2 B2 to the second winner, then we will have three boxes left. And we can use any of these three boxes to give to the third winner. So we can give any of these three boxes to the third winner. If we give B3 to the second winner, however, then we will also have three boxes left. And we can give any of these three boxes to the third winner. give any of these three boxes to the third winner. Now let's stop and think about it. It, doesn't, it looks like it doesn't matter which box we give to the second winner. Either way, we will have three choices remaining for the third winner. So we will have three choices for this scenario and also three choices for this scenario. Altogether, we have four groups of three. One, two, three, four. So we will have four times three, or 12 choices, if we choose to give box number one to the first winner. So if we give box number one to the first winner, then we will have a total of 12 choices. We will have a total of 12 choices. Now what happens if we give box number two to the first winner? So where are you, box number two? Here's box number two. So what happens if we give box number two to the first winner? If we give box number two to the first winner, then we will have four choices for the second winner. Box number two for the first winner, then we can give box one to the second winner or box three, or box four, or box five. The second, uh, and whichever choice we give to the second winner, we will have three options remaining for the third winner. 
three options remaining for the third winner for each choice. And once again, we will have four times three, or twelve choices, if we pick if we pick box number two for the first winner. We have four times three, or twelve choices. We have three more scenarios to cover. Give box three to the first winner one scenario, or give box four to the first winner, or give box five. Now we've covered all the scenarios since there are only five boxes available. In each of these scenarios, we have four different choices to give to the second winner. Within each of these choices, we have three remaining choices for the third winner. So we have 12 choices for each of these scenarios. 12 for box 3, 12 for box 4, and 12 for box 5. So we have 12 choices for each of these scenarios. And since there are five of these scenarios, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then there are a total of 12 times 5, or 60 different ways we can give these five boxes to the top three winners. Let's recap. A tree diagram is a useful tool for us to make an organized list and group choices. When we make a tree diagram, try to find patterns during the tree making, and we can use the patterns to quickly solve the question. No Swedish fish were harmed in the making of this video.